instinct. Feeling. The force brought us together. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. People keep telling me they know me. No one does. But I do. Long have I waited. And now... Coming together. Is your undoing. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Your destiny. Star Wars fans. My nerd world. And welcome to it. My name is John Justice, and I'm glad you are with another episode where I talk about a galaxy far, far away. As always, if you want to email talkshownerd at gmail.com. Of course, leave a comment up on YouTube if you happen to be enjoying the show there. Hope you had a chance to check out last week's episode with Star Wars Santa. Really enjoyed that conversation, and I hope you did as well. We'll talk a little uh, Ahsoka Season 2 teasing of the plot, but some news just dropped. A bit of a leak. Nothing is going to spoil anything. However, the hyperdrive is leaking. A report is coming out from multiple sources. We will focus in on the article from Screen Rant, who says that Disney may be reducing its Star Wars TV show output moving forward, could have major implications for the Star Wars movies and TV shows. Although the franchise has consistently faced scrutiny since Disney purchased Star Wars, many of the Star Wars' best TV shows have been made under Disney's direction, writes Screen Rant. In fact, the Star Wars timeline has expanded considerably in the years following Disney's acquisition. Nonetheless, Disney's Star Wars has had its fair share of controversies and backlash. Of course, the Acolyte's cancellation revealed that. Now it seems like Star Wars may be facing a change. Per the direct and insider, Daniel Rickman, he shared that Disney may be reducing its Star Wars TV show output to just one new live-action show each year. Rickman stated, I'm hearing that several series are in development, but it seems they plan to release only one live action series per year starting in 2025. Now, notably, these reports have not been confirmed by Disney. Nevertheless, this does seem to be keeping with Star Wars recent TV show trends and could very well prove to be true. Now, when you get further into the story, according to the director, the change would likely specifically pertain to live-action shows. This would also be in keeping with Disney's other recent TV show patterns relating to Marvel's strategy of two live-action shows per year. The move would no doubt be a cost-saving measure. In fact, the same article referenced current Walt Disney and former (laughs) Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger's highlighting the need for Disney to both spend less and produce less. Moreover, limiting live-action shows to just one per year would get Star Wars the chance to really hone in on key projects and also bring about that level of excitement once again, waiting for a Star Wars product to come out. I still think that a lot of these movies (laughs) that have been announced are in jeopardy, and I won't continue to go down the roads that I've been down before. Um, Getting further into the piece, relating to the Ray film, that suddenly now isn't being talked about at all anymore, um, which I was excited about. Not so much the director. I still feel like they'll get a different director for that movie, but anything post The Rise of Skywalker, I get really, really excited on. 
Later on in the Screen Rant piece, it talks about what I'll get into here in other details in a moment. But moving to one live action TV show would year would fit also <clears throat> in with the recent comments from Natasha Alou Bordizio, who played Sabine in Ahsoka and Ahsoka season two. According to Bordizio, the show will begin filming next summer, summer, which would mean that Andor season two will be the only live action TV show releasing in 2025. And while these remain unconfirmed reports for now, it seems Star Wars may very well be moving toward a model of only releasing one live action TV show per year. Yeah, the news of um, Ahsoka season two not coming out until 2026 really bums me out. Um, I do. I just I absolutely love that Ahsoka series. It is my favorite Star Wars live action show. I even put it above The Mandalorian. Um, and it's, again, it's a subjective taste because it encompasses everything um, that I love about Star Wars in terms of the, of the storytelling. Whereas Andor didn't have as much of the action and the pew pew that I would have liked, and Mandalorian was lacking of the Jedi aspect of it. I love the linear storytelling. And the telling of a complete arc rather than an adventure of the week of what Ahsoka um, Season 1 did. And I just find it uh, completely uh, rewatchable. Which is why I got excited when I saw this story of fans deciphering potentially a secret message that could tease Ahsoka Season's 2 plot. The clue was hidden in a Season 1 premiere that first aired a year ago. Star Wars fans have discovered this. It's an impressive feat from the community who thinks it hints at where the Disney Plus series will go next season. The new discovery, which was posted on Reddit, is the latest in a string of Easter eggs hidden throughout Ahsoka's first season using a fully translatable Sith language. Past discoveries from the runic language included the names of all the major planets in the show's ever-important pathway to Peridia an intergalactic space route. However, the latest discovery blows the rest out of the water. Three there were who made the journey. This is per the translation on Reddit. Three there were who made the journey without whose knowledge there is no returning, a pathway connecting near and far across the heavens star to star. Despite great powers which do object this secret way, the three protect. So heed the path with a watchful eye, for if you wander, you will die. Now, once the translation was posted, fans immediately began attempting to decipher what exactly the message actually meant in the context of Ahsoka, with many focusing on the three there are, fans seem to have come to the joint conclusion that the most likely answer is that the three are the ones also known as the gods of Mortis, which is something that we all assumed based off of what happened at the end with Balin's skull in Ahsoka season one. These three gods, the father, the son, and the daughter, have a story in Star Wars canon previously appearing in the Clone Wars, making a major appearance in the finale of Ahsoka, again in the form of massive statues discovered by Balin Skull. The three represent the different sides of the Force. The son is the dark, the daughter is the light, and the father represents the balance between both. Each also mirrors characters throughout Star Wars canon. This is also, all this stuff is what I love about Dave Filoni's storytelling. To me, he really is the, the, the heir to what George Lucas was doing. The pathway connecting near to far is clearly the pathway to Peridia, so it seems that Ahsoka Season 2 will delve further into the attempts of the cast to find that long-lost route to another galaxy. Concept art for the second season also revealed Ahsoka and Sabine standing atop the Morta statues that Balin Skull discovers at the end of Season 1, hinting that the two will follow after Balin on the journey laid out in the cryptic message. Though the no-returning bit could mean someone might lose their life on the trip or be strand stranded there forever. But as there is currently no release date for Ahsoka Season 2, fans will have to wait a little longer to find out what's in store. And that, to me, is a big disappointment. Uh, that we would have to wait that long for Ahsoka Season 2, which also means we're waiting a long time to get the entire fully fleshed out Mando-verse storytelling. With the Mandalorian and Grogu coming, which should be contributing to that overall story, 
Ahsoka Season 2 that will hopefully lead into Dave Filoni's big Mandoverse crescendo movie to be released in theaters. Needless to say, all this talk about Ahsoka Season 2 just makes me want to go back and watch the series again. I need someone to show me my place in all this. So I'm a week behind on your emails, your listener feedback, so forgive me of that. But let's get into your comments, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And, of course, those that left comments up on YouTube as well. First, we hear from DJ Sparkle, who typically responds to me and my Depeche Mode podcast, but is now writing to comment for the Star Wars podcast as it pertains to the cancellation of the Acolyte. My apologies for my voice cracking. I'm 49 years old. I grew up with Star Wars. I like the Acolyte. Me too. Yes, slow pacing, and I think the story arc would have been better served if it were told in chronological order. I agree. My millennial wife, who has no attachment to the franchise, loved it. She is, in my opinion, that new fan base they were looking for, and it worked. Trying to see a silver lining for this cloud, I am thinking that maybe some rivers flow underneath a few bridges. And rather like the prequels, I think the storytelling may come back to the series eventually. It'll be looked at in a new light, and from there, new stories will emerge, rather like the prequels we got, The Bad Batch, The Clone Wars, etc. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that take. Also, when you talked about the franchise fatigue in regards to Star Wars and the Acolyte being the bending point of the franchise fatigue, it harkens back to the 2004 Star Trek Enterprise. The show was not treated well by the fans, and is the only series... From back then, except for the original series that got canceled. Now people are streaming it, and the entire show has undergone a complete reevaluation by the fans. And some are really cherishing it as a hidden gem. I think this may be what's happening to Star Wars right now. Heck, also in Doctor Who. I'm the biggest Doctor Who fan you'll ever meet, and a huge Trekkie. My two cents. Thanks for the podcast, Mike, also known as DJ Sparkle out of San Francisco. Always great to hear from you, uh, DJ Sparkle, whether it's on Depeche Mode or Star Wars. Speaking of friends of the show, of which you all are, we have a host of them coming up. First off, Disney Desi, 1496, who says, I don't think the Acolyte will be wiped from canon. I don't either. I don't see them taking it down from Disney+. Plus. Me neither. They already announced some books related to the characters from the Acolyte, so I assume... The story will continue in books and comments, uh, comics, which would certainly kind of lean into what DJ Sparkle was saying. Across the Stars writes, they're going to have to pull out all the stops for Favreau's and Filoni's films. And I mean the original trilogy trio has to be in it. They're the heart of Star Wars, and they're in their primes during that timeline, and there's no excuse not to use them. I've been saying they should give us a movie we all wanted, with all of them together on screen for an adventure. One of Disney's biggest mistakes was not to do that. I really loved Alien Romulus. It might be my favorite Alien movie. I know that's really sacrilege to say based off the original, but in terms of modern storytelling and just being able to sit down and watch a film in terms of rewatchability, I would probably default to Alien Romulus before any of the other Alien films. Close second would be Aliens. Alien is a masterpiece, but it's also a slow burn, right? If you want to sit down and just have some fun, you watch Alien Romulus because it's kind of got everything in it. Very much sort of a kindred spirit to the Star Wars franchise in as much as The Force Awakens is to what Alien Romulus is. I say all of that because while we did get a Star Wars The Force Awakens, the budget on Alien Romulus wasn't all that much. If they could pump out a Star Wars movie, and maybe that's what the Mandalorian and Grogu will be, that's just a fun adventure that's rewatchable, give us that. Look, I'm down for an epic and a sprawling trilogy. We can do that. But at the moment, and maybe I've changed my tune on this a bit, we just need to get Star Wars back up on the big screen. Hopefully the Mandalorian and Grogu does that. I was thoroughly entertained by Alien Romulus. I saw it twice in the theaters, and I really kind of want to go back and see it again before it leaves. 
And lastly, let's hear from N. Blackie, 1948, who says, I agree that the Acolyte Show came across as arrogant and more interested in proving some kind of point about diversity and the worldviews of the creators behind it. There was little interest in telling a good Star Wars story. Star Wars is going the way of the Muppets, and it's the fault of the leadership at Lucasfilm. I don't think the Mando Grogu movie will be a big hit. It will make money, but it won't do a billion. The Ray movie will be a complete bust. If I were them, I'd can that movie immediately. I only see one way to save the franchise, and even then it might be too late. Turn the reins over to Tony Gilroy. He's the only competent writer of the bunch. He probably wouldn't want the burden. But it's worth asking. After watching Ahsoka, it's my opinion that Filoni isn't the answer. I disagree, but it's all subjective. Keep him on animation. He's good there. Live action? Nope. Favreau is too old hat at this point. It can't be him. Star Wars needs to evolve. The next movie needs to be full of high stakes, war, intrigue. And at the risk of sounding old-fashioned, it needs to build to a crescendo of a strong male versus male conflict. I believe that Gilroy could deliver such a story that would contain those elements which Star Wars is in desperate need of. But at the very least, they need to remove Kennedy and put an end to this Ray movie. If they go through with that film, it will be the final nail. Understand, the Ray movie character gives the haters and all those trolls the ammunition they need to torpedo that movie before it even hits. They have no wiggle room anymore to risk it. Do the Mando movie and finish the series they have in production and go silent for like five years. Give Gilroy the opportunity to craft a, an, epic, an epic return. That is the way. You know, Anne Blackie, I really wish you'd share how you really feel about these <laughs> stories. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate everybody that writes into the show. I really do. I'm going to wrap this up. Promo my uh, science fiction series hit a bit, uh, here a bit. Go eat some food because I haven't done that yet today and probably watch the next episode of Ahsoka that I'm on. In the meantime, I really hope that you'll go and check out my science fiction space opera series, Embark. As Earth faces its end, the fight to rule the stars begins. When Taff Guardia agrees to help fellow starfighter pilot Kate Amaro investigate a cryptic message from her late aerospace engineer father, they embark on a mission to uncover the truth behind her father's mysterious death amid a looming planet-wide apocalyptic industrial catastrophe. With two rival mega corporations on the brink of interstellar war during the evacuation, Taft and Katha must race to uncover the key to saving humanity and each other from annihilation before it's too late. Seven books in all in the series, written for adults, but great for ages 11+. plus. If you like your science fiction to be space opera, Themed, epic, filled with romance, cool technology, and action, Embark is perfect for you. Go to Amazon.com and pick up your preferred copy in ebook, Kindle Unlimited, hardcover, paperback, and audiobook. Also, I've got a whole stack of books in my closet, Embark books. I might be willing to give some of those away. If you're interested in me doing a giveaway here on the show, drop me an email and let me know. Also, let me know what books you have in the series. If you have any of them in paperback or hardcover, maybe you don't have the next one. Maybe you'd like the next one. I might be willing to give a few out just for the sake of you listening to the show. So if you're interested, drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com. That wraps up the show for this week. Relatively short, but it's been a long week for me, and I've done a lot of recording of audio today, and I need to go get some food. I hope wherever you are, you are happy, you're healthy, and that you're safe. God bless, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye. The Force will be with you, always. My Nerd World.